Hey guys, DM Scotty here. Good to have you with me on the DM's Craft. Uh, today I'm going to do an interesting craft. This is part of something that I'm doing for AJ's Crypt. And I want to have some really kind of bizarre things in the crypt. And one of them is going to be this fleshy room. So it's kind of a combination of the room tile and adding some, and adding some more 3, a couple of 3D pieces to add to that room tile. So uh, this, this craft is a little, a little more advanced than maybe some of them that I've shown. Um, but everyone can do it. it you definitely, you follow my technique, and you can easily do it. It just takes a little more time and maybe a few more supplies than you might have normally laying around, like cardboard. Um, but yeah, it's not expensive at all, and um, it's, it's fairly easy to, to do if you just take your time and do it, and just, you know, you'll have to do certain steps. It's, it's not a quick thing that you can just whip out. You'll have to, it'll take some time to do this, but but it, it really gives a fantastic result. I think you'll really be super impressed when you see it. So, so let's go to the game, uh, or let's go to the craft table and I'll show you how I start. First thing I'm gonna start with on this project are the tendrils, uh, the strange appendages uh, on the tile. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a base and I'm going to use a, a wood base. These are called woodsies, and this is just a, uh, a base that I got. And then I got this little piece. Um, it's like a spindle, but I'm going to use it to attach to the base, and then put the. I'm actually going to put the wire in. So I'm going to use a thick wire as like an armature to hold up the tendril itself, or the appendage. And then um, I'll insert it into the base. So that'll be nice. I use my goop to glue this together, and then when I get all that uh, together, I'm going to use my uh, white acrylic caulk to build the appendage itself so um, we'll get that going and we'll move on for that to that step here are my armatures and you can see that I've got them all assembled and I'll give you a closer look there so basically this is just going to be the skeleton for this project okay so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my uh, acrylic latex caulk and this is just white acrylic latex caulk uh, I buy the cheapest I can find. I usually can get this for less than a dollar fifty. Um, so now I will. I'm going to start applying the caulk. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push it into the tube itself, and then squirt so I get it on the wire itself. So I'm going to try to cover the wire as I pull it out. And I want to kind of do a bulb on the end. Okay. So now, got all that on there. What I'm going to use is a, a little sculpting tool, and I'm going to kind of help get this uh, better on the wire because it kind of skirted the wire a bit. And this can be a bit tricky and messy, but uh, it gives some pretty fantastic re results, um, as you'll see. So what I'm going to do is just kind of get this, and the way this, this thing is going to be, it's like, I don't really mind that much if it's not pretty to begin with. But as it dries up and starts to get a harder skin, I can work with it better. Okay, now I'm, uh, I'm fairly happy with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start adding some more to the base. What you could do is just squirt it out and you actually use the tool to apply it. And you 
can squirt it on, like so. I want this to almost blend up into the base. All right, so that's good for now. So what I'll do is I'll let this dry and then we'll uh, come back and work on it some more. After you let these uh, dry for a bit, you can actually start manipulating them. Like you can push on the stand, uh, get the get that to come back up. And if they're sagging, um, you can push them back on the wire. You may end up getting a little bit on your hands but that's all right. Just wipe them off. So there, you can kind of shape it. It's starting to dry, but it's not totally dry. So that 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 uh, at this point, when it starts to get a skin on it, you can start reshaping it uh, if you've lost some of your stuff. Now, when this dries a bit more, we can always add some more to fill this in. You know, once we get a framework on here, it's much easier to for it to stick uh, to itself than to try to stick to a thin wire. So we'll let these dry up some more, and then we'll uh, we'll play with them a bit. Now I've let these dry a few days and they don't look particularly great, but uh, you know this this medium is kind of a tricky medium, and uh, it, you know it take it, it takes some time. So um, you know you just have to keep that in mind when you're doing this kind of stuff. So I have my um, caulking. Now I'm just going to remove the glob that I put on keep on the end, keep it fresh, and now I'm just going to add some more. So we'll just do that. So I'm going to kind of fill out this part. And I wanted to kind of have a blob at the end. And I'm going to smooth that kind of into the whole musculature there. And it's looking a little phallic right now. Okay, so I like that for now, so I'm going to do the same thing to the other one. And then we'll come back and move to the next step. Here you go. You can see my guys have dried a bit. And, uh, you know, it's it's looking, well, I guess, very phallic right now. But uh, I love this stuff because it's very flexible. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to kind of bend it into another shape. So I'm going to kind of bend it back. And this is the wire armature inside. So there, so see I got a nice little bend. Uh, and then I'll do a similar one for this. Not the same shape, of course. So there we go, that's uh, pretty nice. So some neat stuff. Okay, 
Now I want to kind of make a maw uh, in these things. So I'm going to use a uh, the actually the, just the end of a paintbrush, and I'm going to stick it in the front here and just kind of push in and move it out like that. And this isn't totally dried. I've let this dry like a day. So there we go. It's got kind of a mouth now. Now I'll do the same to the others. And now we're going to work at putting some teeth in this thing. So I need to make the teeth for these critters. So what I'm going to use, I'm going to use some toothpicks. And uh, I've got like a half a dozen here. And I'm just going to hold them in a line. And cut them off. Okay. So I've got that. So now I'll just do the opposite side. All right, so now I'm ready to apply some teeth. Now to apply the teeth, all I'm gonna do is use a, uh, I have a dental tool here, but you could use anything that's just a, a, a pointed tool. Um, you could use a uh, hole punch or that kind of thing. So I'm gonna just pop it into the critter's gums, and I'm just gonna go around the mouth to see there. If it gets a little bit out of shape, you can always fix that later. Okay, so now um, we'll start applying the teeth. I'm going to kind of do them towards the center. All right, there we go. That looks pretty suitably scary. I think I'm going to add a few more, actually. And uh, I'll go ahead and do that, and then we'll come back and uh, look at it some more. So here I have my uh, critter, and uh, I want to add some more detail to this. Uh, it looks pretty cool with the... Uh, the way that the caulking dried, but I want to add a little bit more detail. I'm going to use my um, glue gun. So now I'm going to just kind of pull along the surface a little bit, kind of like some veiny type details. And then I'll just keep adding that uh, until I'm satisfied with the texture. So here I have my buggers already and painted, and uh, they're painted base painted black, and you can see the detail on that there. Pretty nice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint these first with a um, black cherry. Uh, and this is a very uh, kind of gory looking red. So what I'll do is I'll just grab my big brush and I'm just going to start applying that on there. So I'll uh, paint this up and then we'll uh, paint the other one and then we'll move on to the next step. Here my uh, thingy is looking suitably gory. But I want to add a little a different shade of red. So this is called Cardinal Crimson, and it's a much brighter red. So I'm going to get that on the brush and then start um, adding it to the model. And uh, it seems really bright right now, but it'll darken up. Uh, but it will give some variation of uh, shade on this model. So I'll paint these up, and then we'll move up to the next. We'll move to the next phase. 
with that other red on, you can really see the difference between the, t the two different reds. Uh, and it really gives it some, uh, some interesting variation of color. So now that I've got the body all done, I wanna do the, the uh, projections, the teeth-like projections. So what I'm gonna do with that is I'm gonna use an ivory color and I'll just apply that to my small brush and then just start painting So you can see how those really are starting to pop out. Now I'll finish those up and we'll move on to the next step. Now I don't know about you, but I'm not crazy about my monsters having pearly white. So you can see the teeth are very white, uh, light ivory. Now I'm gonna age them a bit with a brown. I'm gonna use a golden brown. And um, so I'll water it down quite a bit. It's very wet. I'm putting it on very wet. And um, so let me see if you can see what I'm doing here. So I'm just gonna paint those with the wash. And that'll give them a nice look that they're aged, that they're not just totally bright white. Let's see if I can show you that. Okay. So, now one thing we have also with this critter is he looks cool, but I want him to be really kind of glossy and icky looking. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm just going to paint off camera. I'm going to paint him with our water-based gloss and give him a nice gloss sheen. And the next section we're going to move to is modifying the room that these critters are going to be in. So uh, let's go to the table for that. Here I have one of my rooms from the crypt, and uh, what I want to do is have these critters coming out from the floor here. So what I'm going to do is I am going to take one, and I'm going to put it on the uh, tile itself. And I'm gonna what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, kind of trace around. So these are going to be coming out of the floor here. Okay. So I'll do the same with the other one over here, and then I'll, I'm going to what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut those out with an exacto knife. Here are my uh, holes that I cut, so you can see that. Uh, you can see I did it on both sides. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do I'm going to put a piece of uh, thin cardboard on the bottom there um, on each side. And so I'll just glue that on and then we'll start working on the detail. Here's my whole area that I've got the uh, cardboard underneath. Now my goal with this is to make it kind of look like a fleshy area. So I hope you can see this. Uh, I'm going to try to make it so you can see what I'm doing. But I'm going to put some glue in the hole. And then I'm going to kind of pull it into the center. Trying to give a nice texture there. All right, I like that. So now you can see that it's white, but that's not going to stay that way because I'm going to repaint it. So it'll I'm going to do it like a the red color of the uh, pseudopods that are popping out of here. Okay. Now, not only that, I'm going to do some fleshy bits coming off of this hole itself. So, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull, start pulling glue out of the hole. I'm trying to get like a stretchy texture of the flesh. Hope you can see what I'm doing here. I know it's kind of hard it's uh, since it's since it's clear, it's not that always that easy to see. 
this. I'll show you that a little bit. <clears throat> you can see it here. So here's the hole itself, and you can see the texture on there. I hope you can see that some of that other texture that I put on the tile itself. And that'll pop out really well when we paint it. But I'm going to do the rest of the tile, and then we'll come back and we'll start painting it. I'm going to start out just with, like I did with the, uh, the pods and um, I'm going to use uh, this uh, dark cherry uh, red to start and so I'll uh, get on my brush and I'm going to, I'll just start painting the areas. And then I'll paint the fleshy, the stretching flesh going to the each hole. So pretty uh, pretty grisly looking. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'll, uh, I'll finish this up and then we'll come back for the next step. Now that we've dried you can see we not, we've lost that nice gloss and we're going to put it back on there again with the uh, water-based uh, stuff. So I'll just start painting that on there and we will get our gloss back. So what I'll do is I'll uh, cover this all the way up and then we'll take a look at it uh, on the table. Here's our tile and I really think it looks creepy. Uh, here's a guy for scale and you know any adventurer coming into this room with half a brain is going to probably turn around and leave. <laughs> but the thing is what you need to do is give them some enticement. So you could put some kind of treasure here or you could have something they need um, for their quest so that they sort of have to go in there. So yeah. Um, what's great about this room is it, it's obviously messed up. There's obviously something bad <laughs> going on in this room. And so, you know, you really need to put something in there that the adventurers either want or need. So um, that will uh, get them to go in. And then they're going to wonder what the heck are these pits here. And unfortunately, uh, they'll find out soon enough. Uh, then you can have the pseudopods come out of the, out of the pits. So you just put them on the tile like this and then essentially they can stretch anywhere in the room and attack whoever they want. Um, so this can be a really dangerous encounter. It's a small room with these pseudopods lashing around. Uh, you could have poison or any kind of nastiness on the, uh, the teeth. So yeah, I think those, those things came out really, really cool. Um, they were some work to do, but I think the end result was well worth it. They look great. So there we go. There's a fleshy, nasty room for you. And I'll see you next time on The Craft. Hey, crafters. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of The DM's Craft. Uh, make sure to subscribe. And I have tons of other videos, as you can see. I am the originator of the 2.5D method of crafting tiles. I also do dirt cheap terrain for the table. If all this intrigues you, make sure you check out all the videos below. Also, uh, join my forum. We have lots of great crafters on there who give uh, advice. I have a link above and below. And last but not least, remember, go forth and craft! <laughs>